Tasmania, the only state in Australia that doesn't have passenger trains. But we must have had trains years ago because we've still got the tracks. What happened? Perhaps the Beattie Photographic Museum has some answers. From 1879, John Watt Beattie started documenting Tasmania. He took thousands of photos and built a collection. G'day, I'm John Stevenson and I'm the current owner of that collection. Welcome to Beattie's Forgotten Tasmania. So 1871, the first railway in Tasmania was officially opened. Several others followed, all owned by private companies. The state government had provided financial assistance and in 1888 the state took over and founded Tasmanian Government Railways, TGR. This was the golden age of rail with around 750,000 passenger journeys per year from a population of less than 200,000 at the time. I wouldn't have considered myself a train spotter, but I'm a little in awe of the beautifully photographed Tasmanian steam trains on the Rail Media YouTube channel. The Beattie Collection has many pictures of trains, so what happened to them? Where are those trains now? I think the best way to find out is to ask Rowan Canane, producer of Rail Media. I've always been fascinated by steam locomotives, the noise they make, the smell, the sight and sounds of steam, especially running at high speed. And there's just something about steam, it's, it's alive when you, you see dripping water, you see steam coming out of valves and the noise, the whistle, and that sort of really cemented into me when I was very little. 2021 marks the 150th anniversary of Tasmanian Railways and what I would really like to try and do is make some videos to celebrate that event. This photo is a Q-class locomotive in the Hobart rail yard. It looks like the engine is fairly new as it has the small peanut whistle which was later replaced with a louder Nathan three chime whistle. The Hobart station was closed in July of 1978 marking the beginning of the end for passenger services. Here's another photo of a Q-class locomotive. This one's designated Q9. 19 of these were produced by TGR starting in 1922. They were discontinued in 1963. Now only one exists. The sole survivor at the Tasmanian Transport Museum was my first experience actually touching a train that had been photographed around 100 years ago. It makes the then and now experience very real for me. While we were there, Rowan told me about the R-Class as seen in this photo. This locomotive has been streamlined with the addition of smooth bodywork covering the engine. It cuts down the wind resistance and makes them go faster. The same streamlining technology is used today in the super high speed bullet trains, like the one I went on in Japan, that goes over 300 kilometres an hour with a ride smoother than a jumbo jet. But they didn't try for speeds like that in Tasmania, and the whole class was eventually sent for scrap metal. There is, however, a scale model on display here at the Tasmanian Transport Museum. It's not just locomotives that survived. Some of the carriages were preserved too. This photo shows a Sentinel Camel rail car from 1934, photographed by my grandfather, Arch Stevenson. The Tasmanian Transport Museum brings out carriage SP4 during their regular steam days. Today, passenger services have been relegated to heritage rail run by enthusiasts, museums and tourism operators. Rowan identified this Beatty photo as a Bayer Peacock CC-class locomotive hauling a train up the Cabris branch line from the junction at Claremont. The location is still there and you can walk the formation all the way up to Cabris. How cool would it have been to take a steam train ride to a chocolate factory? A little further along the line, evidence of our forgotten rail system is quite prominent. The current bridge was designed to lift up to let boats through. 
Before that, a swing bridge operated and the pivot point is still there. Unfortunately, the tracks are overgrown and the wind echoes of trains long gone. So this section of the railway line here is the original formation and the cuttings that you see here are original. And if you look just up the track here, between this set of points on this side and the set of points on the far side. That was the area where the derailment occurred at Crooked Billet Creek. Over time, the bridge, the original bridge that was there has been demolished and they've made an embankment instead. We're going to head to Northern Tasmania to track down the next survivor. Here's the Mainline Express, hauled by an A-Class locomotive. Behind that's a BA-Class passenger coach from the late 19th century. Only one of the A-Class locomotives is left. The Don River Railway acquired A4 from the Launceston City Park in the early 1990s. While the restoration was started, it now sits in pieces. There's also one of the Majestic M-Class locomotives at the Don River Railway. Unfortunately, it wasn't on public display as it was in for a full overhaul. But a few months later, Rowan managed to film it fully restored and back in steam. This is the Royal Train. The carriages were specially built to provide maximum comfort for visiting royalty. It's preserved at the Don River Railway and is available for hire for weddings and other celebrations. Here's another oddity from the Beatty collection. This tiny train looks like a toy, but it's the Dubs 442T tank engine with its four-wheel passenger carriages about to leave the Sorel station bound for Belle Reve. The Sorel station building is still there, and so are the train sheds. Unfortunately, all the locomotives from the Sorel line were scrapped but there's one piece on display at the Tasmanian Transport Museum. So this here is the, um, the smoke box door from locomotive D2, which operated on the Bell Reeve to Sorrell railway line. A model of the Sorrell train runs every day at the local hardware store. Then Rowan told me that part of the boiler barrel from D2 can be found beside the road coming into Southport. It was used in a sawmill, but now the mill is abandoned and the boiler sits in a paddock covered by bush. It's in good company, as nearby there's this boiler from the Hobart to Launceston Express. So what happened to our trains? In 1978, the Tasmanian Government Railway's track and rolling stock was transferred to the Commonwealth Government. Then the 1980s brought economic rationalism. In 1997, Tasmania's railways were privatised. Being bounced from private to state to federal and then back to private hands, I think that was the real killer for passenger services. No one could find a way to make them pay. 
except for Heritage Rail, where thankfully we're spoilt for choice in Tasmania, due to a largely volunteer workforce that keeps the steam alive. You can see the photos from this episode, along with the research, references and links on our website, ForgottenTasmania.com slash episode slash 302. Don't forget to like and subscribe, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!